Hello everyone, I'm Dylan. Welcome to Dylan Dev Lab. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever dreamed of creating a unique game character, one that truly reflects your personal touch? In the world of modern RPGs, a character customization system isn't just a feature, it's an indispensable experience that allows players to express their creativity. But how do you build a character customization system that is not only powerful and flexible, but also easy to expand and upgrade later on without touching too much code? In today's long and detailed video, we won't just be making a simple character customization system. We're going to build a professional data-driven system together using an incredibly powerful Unity tool, Scriptable Objects. Join me as we explore how to turn ideas into reality right now. This system heavily relies on how you design and organize your assets. I'm currently using a specific asset pack. You can find the link in the description below. Choosing the right assets will determine how we implement this. There are many ways to change character parts, but based on this asset pack, I will focus on changing parts using Skinned Mesh Renderer. This is a common and effective technique in Unity. Please ensure your character parts are separated and can be replaced independently. This is the core, the heart that will elevate our system. Instead of hard coding a list of items into the character, we will define them as data. This provides maximum flexibility. Let's create a new c -sharp script called eGender. This will be a simple enum to define genders. Next, create another enum called eCustomization category to define the types of customizable parts for all genders. For example, hair, shirt, pants, eyes, hat. Create the customization category data class. This will be where all items within a specific category are stored. This class will have functions to get an item by index and to get the total number of items in the category. Create the Customization Gender Data class. This is where all data for a specific gender will be stored. What gender it is, the default model, base character prefab, a list of parts available on the model when created, like default hair, eyebrows, body, and a list of all categories belonging to this gender. Additionally, there will be utility functions to retrieve category data based on an enum or index. And a function to check if a category is in the default list. Step four, customization configs, where all data is stored. Now, we will create a place to store all the data we just created using a scriptable object called customization configs. It will also have a dictionary to quickly retrieve items inside instead of having to iterate through all elements in the list, which will significantly improve speed if there are many elements. Step five, character holder. Managing slots on the model. Create the character holder script to attach to the default model prefab. This will be where the list of slots is stored, including a holder, an empty game object to group items when created for easier management, and a default skinned mesh to assign to new skinned meshes when created. This class will also have two functions to retrieve the holder and the default skinned mesh based on the category. After that, we need to change game object to character holder in customization gender data. So we've finished creating the data part for this system. Now let's move on to setting up the model and data in the Unity editor. Based on the initial prefab, 
I've created a new prefab for the initial male and female models. Both have the character holder script attached and have their slots and default skinned meshes used as references set up for each part as well as holders to contain items when created. In this prefab, the head and hands do not have customizations, so I will enable these parts. This entirely depends on your assets and which parts you want to be customizable. Next, create customization configs in the Create menu to store all data. Drag each gender's model in and create categories, then drag the part prefabs in and set up the default categories. This is the part that, when a gender is selected, will be created along with the character model, like hair, eyebrows, body part. Other parts like glasses, hats, are optional additions and will not be created initially. After setting up the configs, we will now begin with the main logic part to customize the character. First, we will create character appearance data. This is a class that can store and retrieve character options, gender, and temporarily store created items in memory via a dictionary to avoid recreating them multiple times, which helps optimize the system. It will have an appearance choice list to store the currently selected category and index, and a choice dict dictionary that serves a similar purpose, but since Unity doesn't serialize dictionaries and a pre errance choice list is needed for convenient saving and loading later if necessary. Additionally, the cache dict dictionary is where all created items of the selected gender are stored, so that when an item is chosen, the system will check the cache first to retrieve it if available. This class will have functions to get and set options. The set gender function will clear the options in the list and dictionary. And the reset choices function will be called when the reset button is pressed. The try get cached option function will retrieve an option from the cache if it exists. The cache option function will store the item in the cache. That's all the logic for this script. Now, let's create the actual brain of this system, which is the character customizer. This is the central script that handles all the system's logic. This script will contain customization configs to retrieve data, default gender to set the initial gender. It will apply changes to the character model and notify the UI when there are changes via events. It will be a singleton for easy access from other places like the UI. First, we need to set up the singleton, and there's a set gender function that will save the selection to appearance data and invoke the on gender changed event. This function will be called on start and pass in the default gender mentioned above. Next is the function to initialize the character corresponding to the selected gender.
This function will check if a character already exists. If so, it will delete it and create a new one. After the character is created, the pre-warm default set function will proactively create and cache the default outfit as set up in the data section earlier. This helps the character display quickly when first created. The apply change function is for handling the creation and saving of items. First, it will check and disable the old item, then activate the new item if available. If not, the system will initialize a new one and save it to the cache. If initializing a new one, we need to retrieve the skinned mesh renderer component of that item and assign the bones and root bone of the default skinned mesh retrieved from the character holder set up earlier so that the newly created item can be displayed and affected by the bones in the model. Next, create the next option. Previous option, randomize all, randomize category, reset all, reset category functions so players can interact. The update option function recalculates the index when next and previous option, then calls the apply option function and invokes the event. This function is called in next option with a direction of one and in previous option with a direction of minus one. So, we've finished creating the main logic for the system. Now, let's move on to setting up the scene before we get to the UI. First, create a game object for the character customizer and drag the data config into it. Then, we will create a canvas to contain the UI. Next, let's create a render texture to display the character on the UI, adjusting its size to 1024x1200, or a size appropriate for your project. After that, create a new camera, drag the newly created render texture into it. This camera will focus on the character when it's created. Create a character preview game object to contain a raw image, adjust its size appropriately, and drag the render texture into it. Then, drag a character onto the scene to adjust the camera's position for proper display on the UI. Once we have a suitable position, let's go back to the code for the UI part of this system. Let's create the category UI panel script. This script will be attached to a UI prefab representing a customization row, for example, a row for hair, including its name, next a prev buttons. First will be the init function to assign the category type and set the label text. 
followed by a function to update the count text. Then, there will be functions to assign actions to the buttons. Finally, call the corresponding functions previously created in the character customizer script via the singleton. Next, we will need a script to manage the entire UI, which is the customization UI handler. This script will have buttons like randomize all, reset all, and a gender selection button. It will have the newly created category UI panel prefab as a reference, a content parent, which is where items are contained, and a list of category UI panels that will be created. In one Nable, we will register the on gender changed and on option changed events from the character customizer. When the character customizer notifies gender changed, the customization UI handler will automatically update the interface. Similarly, when a different option is selected, it will also receive a notification to update the corresponding UI items interface. Next is the Sync UI Categories function. This is the most powerful feature. It will compare the number of item categories in customization gender data with the number of existing UI panels. If there are too few, it will automatically instantiate more UI panels from the prefab. If there are too many, it will destroy them. This means you only need to add data to customization configs, and the UI will automatically update accordingly without any code intervention. Next is the update UI function to init all created UI items. Finally, we will register the actions of the buttons and call the corresponding functions from the character customizer. Let's go back to the game scene, and here I have already created the UI. We will have a game object to assign the customization UI handler script to, and create a header section containing the buttons for this script, like the gender selection button, reset all, and randomize all. Next, create a scroll view, and inside the content object, attach a vertical layout group component and a content size fitter with the vertical fit, set to preferred size. After that, create a UI item and assign the category UI panel script to it. Inside, it will include four buttons and two text labels, text name and text count. Then, drag this category UI panel to make it a prefab and then drag its reference into the customization UI handler. Finally, delete this UI item. So we're done. Now let's play the game and test our results. Here, we can press buttons to change gender. When changed, the system will load the customization items corresponding to the selected gender. Then, we can choose any parts, press the random button for individual parts, or if we don't like it, we can press reset. And that's our entire character customization system complete. Through this video, we have together built a powerful, flexible, and easily expandable data-driven character customization system using scriptable objects in Unity. This is an extremely useful technique for any game project. I hope you've learned many valuable things from this video. If you found it good and useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. See you in the next videos.